awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> oh my god, this is this is pure auto fuel car feeling as we say. The Bentley Continental GT Speed, supposed to be the sporty pinnacle here at Bentley, as coupe or convertible, enjoy it together here with us. Let's go! This is Thomas from Autofuel calling out from an hour outside of Rome here from the Italian countryside. So beautiful and also with a beautiful vehicle here in the Speed version with a blacked out front grille for more sinister look. Beautiful round retro headlamps and also the turning indicators in the very same style. Here then in the Speed version also with a black ring around it. The length is at 4 meters 85 or 191 inches and you can see that even the convertible has this kind of coupe styling and beautiful with the gray color and the gray soft top convertible that's awesome isn't it and then we have black 22 inch wheels here in the speed style red brake calipers and 12 cylinder indication right here and now let's open that top that's always fun to look at at the whole process it's not the fastest but you can also do it while driving up to yeah i think it's about 50 kilometers an hour so it's really helpful to have the soft top here and you can also close it when it starts to rain and so on and so on and then of course you can lower these windows here again to have the coolest open top look love it and in the rear i especially appreciate the timeless design it looks modern at the same time it looks classic retro design and here the black details around in the speed version small carbon fiber lip and when you hit the turning indicators or the hazard lights it also looks really spectacular and in the lower part you can see these huge exhaust tips but <whistles> out of the fake exhaust police this is definitely a case for it it's the beauty tip on the outside a little bit dirty here in this case but you can see the real exhaust is on the inside There is also a racetrack feature to come with the coupe later on. This will be very exciting. If you look here in comparison, convertible and the coupe from the front, that's quite similar. But of course, in the side silhouette, definitely the coupe is even more beautiful, at least to me. Tell me what you think. Yeah, but then again, when you can open the top, mm, that's so tempting, isn't it? Okay, can we take a moment to appreciate this shot? You see that small orange convertible in the back there? It's not a model, it's a real one. <laughs> And then, ah, yeah, what do you think here about the orange color? It's striking as well, isn't it? And this three quarter from the rear is also very beautiful perspective here then for the coupe. You can see here, this is the rear spoiler, a retractable one. This is in the top setting. There's also like a setting in between that. And it goes automatically. You can do it manually in the menu from the inside of the vehicle. But actually, the car usually does it automatically and raises it at higher speeds. And the special thing that comes with the speed model is, especially, the rear axle steering up to 4.1 degrees in the opposite direction than the front wheels. This makes the car so much more agile at lower speeds. We will also experience that in our driving part today. And we also have different exhaust tips. Because here we have the Akrapovic exhaust and let's take a look inside. Oh. Also a case for the Auto Gefühl fake exhaust police. Well, the air does go through, but yeah, what do you think? For the Continental GT you can also get a 4 liter V8 but this one here is the 6 liter W12 and in the speed version it gets 25 horsepower more now it's 660 horsepower 3.6 seconds in the acceleration figure and the top speed 335 kilometers now or 208 miles per hour uh, yeah about that by the way interesting thing here you know they pay a lot of attention to detail the oil cap here is from metal and there has been a discussion at Bentley if they should put it in plastic 
for safety issue because when it's a metal it's hot when you actually want to open it after an engine has been running but they kept it metal because oil cap needs to be metal this is the key fob really great quality and pretty thick actually and door handles fold out to the upside a little bit and then door closing sound yeah not too good it's okay uh, but of course one reason for that is here frameless doors and then it's quite a normal thing but you also have the soft close then interior with bespoke styling color combinations you also can get this nime sound system which is yeah probably the most awesome one i've ever heard it's really amazing the speed has the special entry badges here and also sporty pedals and it automatically comes here with an alcantara steering wheel that's awesome better grip more sportiness and also alcantara here at the dashboard as well as in the middle part of the seats so bentley is also going sporty and also more animal free they're developing new materials alongside also to as a you know as a leather replacement here this one is still animal source but you can ask for Molina to get more animal free parts but here definitely with the Alcantara seats I think it does the car very well it has a younger appearance than overall and did you know by the way while customers in US and in Europe are more you know traditional Bentley customers in China the average customer age for Bentley customers is 35 that's astonishing isn't it here seating position actually quite sporty from the ergonomics I think it's good but not excellent I mean the base seat ergonomics so to me it could be a little bit more suitable for tall people I still have enough headroom in here with one meters 86 or 6 with one but long-term comfort from the seat ergonomics I found better like with Volvo or with Audi for example and um, not with Mercedes actually so at this moment here Volvo and Audi and also BMW um, they offer the best ergonomics I think and recently even uh, you know in the Opel Astra it was great but I think manufacturers need to pay more attention to the ergonomics of the seat rather than just focusing on if they are plush or not what is clear is that with the Alcantara surface it feels even softer it's cozier and not cold in winter times and also thinking of sporty driving you're just being kept better in the seat actually while driving when you take a seat here so many beautiful details i love the mix of analog and digital look at that here metal knurling buttons here the steering wheel one button with nice clicking sound for the steering wheel heating left side as well but then we have the digital instruments for example and there you can for example um, also have the map inside so that's pretty helpful not from carplay or android auto though just when you use the car internal gps and then once again these analog instruments like how you close the vents and this resonates so well because you can still feel you can touch something and it makes a connection between you and the vehicle and the vehicle seems to be more alive here are also these gauges look at that classic gauges you can have this view then also this in the compass but you can press a screen and then it turns like this and then you have that screen there's a very beautiful solution so you can indeed have both worlds when this happens when you press the screen once you know it always switches between the monitor and here these gauges but when you actually press and hold this button then woo tada and you have a completely clean look the analog lock should not be missing and more again these valve closes and openers for the vents and you still have here also buttons for example zooming in and, and out the map and here for the volume i love that i like to have separate buttons for that also then here with the climate unit clicking sound temperature control easy while driving also separate buttons here for seat heating and seat cooling to me that's how it's supposed to be because yeah manufacturers say the driving smartphones blah 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 but a smartphone cannot drive me from a to b this one can and i drive it myself when we're all autonomous put 10 screens whatever but as long as we drive cars ourselves i just want more than just screens i want buttons to press i want dials to turn and everything and feel that the car is actually you know 
present. Do you know what I mean? And we also have high build quality here in the middle console. Ah, this is just beautiful. I could open and close this one here all day. The cup holes in here under the armrest. You have then some more charging possibilities. We also have an Alcantara headliner here in the coupe. That's also beautiful. Well, and the rear seats, I mean, you can put bags on there maybe or for short trips, maybe you can drive with three or something, but behind the seats in the front when you have tall adults, there's not really much space. I can't even really test it. In our GTC here for today, we have the most awesome color combination. Once again, Alcantara seats here. They look so beautiful and what a great contrast in here with the bright colors and also the stitching here, speed stitching, also Alcantara at the head restraints. We are missing the Alcantara steering wheel in here, but of course you can also get it. But here I think, you know, the gray-gray mixture with a little bit bright accentuations also with that exterior color. Wow, this color combination here is just absolutely stunning. Oh, what's your take on that? Tell me in the comments. Headroom in the convertible when it's closed, by the way, is a little bit less, but still works headroom-wise with all people. And also here, what an awesome soft Alcantara cover here, also in the bright or gray style at the inside of the convertible roof. And here, when you have this brushed aluminum style, then it also looks different when the screen is turning up like this. Yeah, that's a great thing to show off to your friends, isn't it? And the infotainment system itself, well, you know, it is the Porsche Panamera platform, and this also yeah, is taken from the infotainment system from the Porsche Panamera because you kind of have the same side menu here. It could be more responsive. You see here the initial loading time is sometimes also pretty long, but then actually you get along, you have um, you know, different menu settings like here with the car menu where you can also retract the spoiler for the coupe and so on. Then you have nice visualizations and of course also you have the Apple CarPlay connection. And here we go, this is the Apple CarPlay integration. So it doesn't go all the way to the side, but yeah, I think it's still quite okay. And there you can always go back to the Bentley menu if you like. Again, it could be a little bit faster and you also have a car internal GPS. And you can see um, from how the screen is oriented, um, it does catch a lot of sunlight indeed, and especially in the convertible. Well, I can just stress again, this Naim sound system is I mean, it's one of the most incredible things I've heard. You even feel the bass in your seat for the alike. And in the back of the convertible, here at the moment have the wind effector mounted, but when it's dismounted, it looks beautiful. But once again, not much space for your legs. Trunk comparison, you can see here, it gets close with the convertible here with the cabin trolley and the backpack. You can push this further in, that works, but that's about it then. And also, especially not really high. Whereas in the coupe, you have a little bit more height, definitely. Uh, so that's clearly easier because you don't need to store the roof. However, considering the size and the length of the vehicle, it's also just okay. Length is, by the way, 90 centimeters or 35 inches. All right, Vallalunga racetrack in Italy, let's go. One fifty. Woo! <laughs> that was already a lot of fun. All-wheel drive performance, of course, and we also have the rear axle steering here that won't make such an effect on high speed like we have right now, one seventy kilometers an hour, because then the rear axle will steer in a parallel direction. But here, when we have tighter corners, when we're a little bit slower, then the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction to about yeah one kilometers or sixty miles an hour. That's approximately the threshold, we just have more agility. And now this 12 cylinder power out of the corner, 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, wow. And I mean, even under the helmet, I think you can also hear it on camera, you hear and feel that the car is relatively silent also at higher speeds. Now long right corner, rear exit steering again, placing now can accelerate, wow. And it's directly coming, the torque is already there. It's not waiting now, it's a very tight corner here on the brakes. Great braking performance indeed also. And now you really tighten, you feel how the rear axle is helping you actually. And, and then of course also out of the corner. Wow. I mean, you do feel the weight. At some point you can't deny physics. So yeah, I would not take this car like on a 24 hour race or something. <laughs> Yeah, Bentley is, it has been doing that, definitely, but yeah, the thing is, you do feel the weight 
pushes you to the outside of the corner. Also, um, we don't have the Alcantara seats on this very model. You do need the Alcantara seats if you do more sporty driving fun because they keep you tighter. So I'm sliding quite a lot now on these animal skin seats. Um, yeah, I mean, it is impressive how to have this performance in such a heavy vehicle and it really handles very well. But definitely for a real track day, I would always go with a smaller or, or even lighter car because it just is actually easier to drive. Now you're on that straight. Well, that is really the GT speed, more than 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. It can go even faster. That is possible. Here we have to be a little bit careful, still wet road. Yeah, so they have the anti-roll bars here also in place. So they keep the car straight. You see, we are hardly leaning at all. In the Sportsman, also more response from the throttle. And when we drive faster, the air suspension automatically lowers. So we have less wind resistance. We are also closer to the road and the car handles even sportier. But whoa, you have to work with your um, lumbar area all the time. There's a lot of sports <laughs> against the physics to be kept upright here in the seat. I can hold on to the steering wheel, but here, Andrea, my instructor for today, he's from the Vallelunga racetrack. Yeah, maybe he's like, oh, you know, I've been driving this track like a thousand times. That's totally normal. <laughs> uh, what would you say? What, what's the most uh, special thing about this racetrack actually here, Vallelunga? What's well, the most? I think we are two points, one very fast and one very slow. So this is the special one. Ah, ah OK. Racetrack. So the mix mix of mix, really yes. fast and yes. really slow. Yeah, yeah. Really famous this racetrack here. And uh, yeah, we know that especially our I Italian fans Greetings to all of you guys. Um, I know you love motorsports, you love racing, and yeah, that's why we also have this racetrack piece here for you today. So for me, the finding is, yeah, for everyday racetrack experience, the car is too heavy, can't deny that. But the finding for the driver, which will probably not use the car on the racetrack, but on normal road is, that rear axle steering works very well, makes the car even more agile and even more fun. Lovely. Well, and this is here what this vehicle is actually designed to do, especially the convertible, of course. Open cruiser, long wheelbase, and just enjoying everything. And well, especially then with this name sound system. I mean, it's so great. I told you that already earlier. 4D in with a bass vibration in the seat and. Wow, it's awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> oh my God, this is, this is pure auto fuel car feeling, as we say. I just love it, I really love it. So, well, they also thought of me with the Alcantara seats here today. And this is something, you know, I, this is the thing I love to do with vehicles driving convertible open top, sun is shining, listening to some great music, pretty loud. <laughs> and yeah, you just forget everything else. You focus in the moment, you live in the moment and you can just enjoy. We do have the 22 inch wheels here. Yes, because it's the speed model. This does cost you some comfort in everyday driving. They look of course really great, but if you would want a more you know, or a better compromise between sportiness and comfort, smaller wheels would actually be a, you know, a better idea. The suspension, however, is still doing a good job. And also that rear axle steering just makes the car so much more agile. You know, also just here with normal road driving, it feels like it would have a shorter wheelbase, although it doesn't. And also when you're like driving a little bit slower in a parking lot, easing the car around, this is so much easier having that rear axle steering and now 4.1 degrees the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction. Of course in normal driving life you would not really need that W12 here sufficient power for sure and the V8 is a little bit lighter than on the front axle not the biggest difference but it is a small difference 
So, oh wow, that screen here is um, pretty much reflecting now when the sun is coming in. That's the thing with these screens. But when you would turn it around and here, um, this aluminum surface also is reflecting. It looks great, but for reflections, it's not the best actually, but um, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, and that's Italy. <laughs> when you're driving a 600 horsepower plus car, you get overtaken by Lancia Y. Um, <laughs> maybe our Italian fans can help us a little bit if the speed limit that we see on the traffic sign is actually something that is of importance, or is it maybe just a side note? <laughs> yeah, about that. So, um, yeah. Nevertheless, especially when you're driving with open top, you don't feel like you would need to speed anything. You just feel like everything's fine, you know? So, and, and here, yeah, once again, great precise input from that steering wheel, really awesome. If you drive rather calmly and have it also like motorway cruise control, you can score some fuel economy figures of 13 liters on one kilometer. That's 18 mpg US and about 22 mpg UK. And I had actually the same with the Bentley Bentayga V8. And uh, so obviously it doesn't make the biggest difference consumption wise if you have the W12 or the V8. It's more about the weight of the car is there anyway, you know. Um, yeah, maybe the V8 will be a little bit better, and of course, on paper it is better, and also tax taxation-wise and so on. But that's of course one pill we have to swallow. That with this huge vehicle, there is a very high fuel consumption, and yeah, and maybe just uh, um, you know, future Bentley models will help. They're going all electric. They are offering more and more plug-in hybrids and so on and so on. This can maybe something, but to me, when I drive combustion engines and electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid vehicles, to me always, like from a pure driving feeling, it is rather an either-or decision. So the experience in an electric vehicle is awesome, and the experience in a um, you know powerful high displacement combustion engine is really awesome. But the plug-in hybrids usually give you some kind of mismatch driving feeling that's you know my experience so far here with 70 kilometers an hour you can easily drive it I have the big wind deflector mounted here that you see you know my hairs aren't moving at all so very good as for the wind features here driving open top and since it's a great soft top with multiple layers you can also drive it at higher speeds with close up and won't have big difference to the coupe the Coupe will be more silent at really, really high speeds. You know, that's actually the thing. So, and of course, when you're just cruising, you don't hear too much, but at the same time, you can always go, I was actually in sport mode, it still felt like cruising. So <laughs> when you're in sport mode, you can hear also shift down the pedals and then, yeah, you can always have then this wobbling sound. You can go back to the Bentley driving mode, then the suspension is also a little bit more forgiving. Here, uh, you know, just an hour outside of Rome, we have a lot of bumpy roads indeed. So, yeah, once again, 22 inch wheels, not the best idea indeed, but the suspension here is doing a great job. And yeah, once again, feedback from our Italian viewers uh, wanted. Um, is that normal, the road conditions here? So, um, yeah, you know, everyone. Is annoyed by bad roads, but just just to just to ask you guys, is that actually normal? Oh, here's now a little a little bit better, but I've seen a lot of um, destroyed roads actually. Yeah. So this is one of the convertibles to enjoy life with actually, and really um, really glad they're also moving more into um, um, sustainability direction and also alternative materials. Beginning also here with the Alcantara, and also more news to come from that from Bentley side very soon. And of course, looking forward to the first electrified model. But so far, of course, it's a lot of fun also with these, you know, high displacement engines because they are not about being flawed out all the time. Of course, you can do it and you see it also works on the racetrack, but it's more about you have the power in the back of your mind and you drive it at very, very low RPMs and that kind of brings the calmness. So in this case, rather, big engine to bring more calmness 
that's definitely a very interesting perspective. Yeah, but I ho really hope you have enjoyed also this open top driving here. We do have more content here of the Continental GT and GDC. We had a review earlier, definitely tune into that one. And we also have recently uh, Ventiga S episode. See you there.